Hello, and welcome to the ninth and final video in the SolidWorks Composer Quick Start Guide, a new video series designed to orient new users in Composer and familiarize them with some of its basic functionality. This video is centered on exporting our deliverables to PDF, Microsoft Word, and HTML. Since each of these is a relatively complicated process, this video is broken up into three parts. This is the second part of the video, which will focus on exporting to Microsoft Word. If you missed the first part, or would like to know how to export your models to PDF, check the description for a link to that video. With that out of the way, let's get started. We'll begin in Microsoft Word itself. We need to make sure the Developer tab is available in the ribbon at the top of the screen, which we can do by opening the Options menu from the File tab. If we go to the Customize Ribbon tab, we can add the Developer section to our ribbon. With that available, I'll go to the Legacy Tools menu, and under the ActiveX Tools, select the More Tools option. We'll scroll to the Composer Player X option and select it. You'll see a box where the Composer file will be shown is displayed at the bottom of the screen. If we don't like the size of the player, we should resize it now. After we've resized the player, we need to bring in our file. Right-click the window, go to the Composer Player ActiveX object, and select Properties. We just need to browse for our Composer file and make sure the Pack Katia Composer Document option is unchecked. Under Layout, we'll uncheck all the toolbars to maximize the amount of space that the Composer document takes up. Now, all we need to do is select OK, and we're good to go. We'll exit Design Mode, and the file appears in our Word document. We have additional flexibility than simply adding the assembly to the viewport. Action buttons are a great way to add additional functionality to our models. To add one, we'll go back to the Developer tab, go to Legacy Tools, and select the Insert Command Button Control button. Once it's appeared, we can change its label by right-clicking it, going to the Properties menu, and changing the Caption field to our desired phrase. If we want to link it to a particular view, say, the default, we need to do a little bit of coding. If we double-click the button, a menu will open with some lines of code. In between the private sub and end sub headings, we'll enter the phrase DS Composer Player Active X1. Go to configuration. After that, we'll enter the name of our desired configuration in quotes. In this case, it's default. Now, this button will bring us to the default view of our part. Let's take a look. We can link other views from the Composer file as well. I have an exploded view of this tape gun saved in the Composer file. Let's say I want it accessible within the Word document. I'll return to the Legacy Tools menu and select the Command button option. I'll return to its Properties menu, and this time give it the name Exploded View. As you can see, the name is too large for the default size of the button so we'll resize it to fit its label. We'll double-click it to access the code menu and use the same command as last time, only this time calling the exploded view. When we exit design mode and click the button, you can see that our exploded view is now easily accessible from our Word document. Linking your Composer files to Word documents is a fantastic way to share your Composer files and creations with collaborators who may not have access to Composer. This wraps up the second part of our three-part finale. As always, remember to subscribe to the SolidWorks YouTube channel to stay up to date with episodes in the series, and check out the forums and blogs for fantastic additional Composer content. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.